These are the candidates for sheriff. The Office of Sheriff serves as the chief law enforcement officer for the county and is also responsible for all judicial support, including court security, and oversees the operations of the Bear County Adult Detention Center. The candidates for this office are Susan Pomerlo, Javier Salazar, Larry Ricketts, and James Dorsey. Uh, we will begin with their two-minute opening statement, starting with Ms. Pomerlo. Good evening, and thank you so much to the League of Women Voters for setting this up and uh, arranging for us to be able to speak to you about the issues. And this race is about public safety today and into the future. And in the Sheriff's Office, we're in the midst of some exciting changes. In fact, one week from today, we will break ground for the first ever sheriff's substation after talking about it for 17 years. We're also leaving behind the stubby pencil era and moving into technology 30 years ahead of where we started when I became the sheriff. Going from paper and pencil to an automated law enforcement state-of-the-art records management system, pay and personnel system, all those kinds of things that allow us to do the job better and put deputies on the street and on the floors of the jail where they need to be working, not spending so much time in terms of having to be inundated by paper. But these changes don't just happen. It takes leadership. And from someone who has a proven track record, leading strategic transformation of organizations as I have done, rising to the rank of Major General while I served 32 years in the United States Air Force and as a Senior Vice President at USAA. So it's someone who has experience in leading a large organization of almost 2,000 people and managing a budget of close to $200 million. So this election is about performance, not politics. It's about responsibility, not rhetoric. It's about experience, not e-blasts, and it's about the public. Thank you. Safety. Your time has expired. Thank you. Mr. Salazar. Good evening. My name is Javier Salazar. I want to be your next sheriff. I'm a Bear County native, and I'm a 23-year veteran of the San Antonio Police Department. For 16 years now, I've been happily married to a, a young lady named Sarah Salazar that is a kindergarten teacher on the south side of town. And together, we're raising two beautiful young women who are 14 and 21 years of age. I love my family and I love Bear County. It's my home. I was born here. We're raising our family here. And one of these days, a long time from now, I'm gonna retire here. In the meantime, I wanna to continue to protect and serve as I've, as I've done for the past 23 years. See, nationwide, <clears throat> my profession, law enforcement, is in crisis. We're in crisis because many agencies are having a hard time connecting with the community they serve. And quite frankly, people are dying. I've seen enough, in my career, I've seen enough dying and killing to last 100 careers, and it needs to stop. Now, while I can't directly control what happens in the rest of the country, what I can control is my little piece of the world right here in Bear County. What I can do is I can make sure that those, those relationships exist in plenty here in Bear County, and that we, culture, we, we cultivate those relationships and maintain them the way any relationship needs to be. We need to serve as the example to be emulated across the country, and that's how you attain long-term cultural change across an entire nation. I'm proud to have served in many, many different levels of law enforcement, as a boots on the ground patrol officer making calls, as an undercover narcotics detective for 10 years working against uh, organized crime and human trafficking and narco-terrorism. I've done it as a supervisor, leading my officers into a calculated risk and making sure that everybody gets home at the end of the night. And I've also done it as a member of the administration of one of the largest, of the largest law enforcement agency here in the, in the county, the San Antonio Police Department. <coughs> so I'm proud to say that I've, that I've served you for 23 years and I'd love the opportunity to serve for another 25. And I'm asking you for the opportunity to do it as your next sheriff. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ricketts. My name is Larry Ricketts. I'm a native Texan. I've been married to the same lady for 45 years. We have three daughters, 11 grandchildren, we own a business in Southeast Bear County. We have a daycare center, and that's been in business for 31 years. 
I served my country in Vietnam as a Special Forces Commander. When I came back from Vietnam, I went into the elevator construction trade where I spent 20 years installing elevators and escalators throughout South Texas. I was on multi-million dollar jobs at all the military bases in Texas. All these jobs were done under budget and savings were given back to the company. I started to work in the Sheriff's Department in 1989. I worked in the jail for seven years. Since I left the Sheriff's Department, I've been in, in the Constable's Department. I'm a captain in Precinct 4. All my service has been 27 years in county law. I look forward to the debate tonight and any questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dorsey? Well, thank you to the League of Women Voters. I tell you guys, if my Lord and Savior never does anything else for me, he's done enough. My history speaks for itself. I was born in Raven, Louisiana, to a, a woman who I lost at an early age I never got to know. I never understood why the Lord would take her away from me. After that, I was raised by my grandfather. He took on me and five siblings, and he, had all, he already had 10 himself. Well, the thing in this house was that you're going to graduate and you're going to go to college. I did that. I graduated Raven High School. I went to college. College wasn't for me. It's not for everybody. But shortly after, I joined the military. I joined the military in 1982. I met my wife in 85. Joining the military was the best thing that ever happened to me. And my hat's off to all the veterans, be it retired, active, or disabled. This country deserves to give you guys mega respect. I served in the military under the, power, under the command of many, many powerful generals. I went to the desert in 1991 and served Desert Shield, Desert Storm, and also served during Desert Calm. While in the desert, I had the opportunity to work with some very, very professional individuals. We did some things in the desert that most people never ever get to see. So when I say that before you, and I say I have the experience, you can trust that Mr. Dorsey have been through the valley, and he have done just about everything that could possibly be done. We have a crisis in San Antonio on all sides of the railroad. We need to really, really, really think about the candidate that we put in office. I ask you for your vote as the next Barrett County Sheriff. I will be the strongest sheriff that Barrett County has ever had. We have had a crisis in Barrett County as far as I can remember. Thank you. Time has expired. Um, for our first question, uh, and we're going to start with Mr. Salazar on this one, uh, what are the most significant challenges in running a jail? Well, you're dealing with a population that doesn't want to be there, first and foremost. Our, our current sheriff has, has uh, compared her, her position to that of being a landlord. The only problem with that is that you have tenants that, that don't want to be there, they're going to, they're going to look to escape, or they may look to commit suicide. And in uh, the past several months, we've seen that the, the current sheriff's administration has a, a challenge in preventing either one of those. And so those are the, that is the, what, you're, what you're dealing with. You're dealing also with a, with a population that has um, a higher than average uh, population within it of, of those that are, uh, that are mental health consumers. And so you have to take a proactive approach to, uh, to preventing suicide and to dealing with those mental health issues. Uh, at present, that's not being done as proactively as it should, and uh, that's what I hope to bring to the Sheriff's Office. Thank you. Mr. Ricketts? Well, I'm proud to say that my seven years working in the jail, we never had a suicide. The officers that work there were very diligent in doing their job and checking on these individuals constantly. The old times still work. Some of the new stuff is not working. If you don't check on each body at a given time, you're gonna wind up with somebody who's wanting to commit a suicide because they don't wanna be there to begin with. Uh, the morale at the jail right now is the lowest it's ever been, and it's just gonna get lower because the deputies are not being treated with respect that they deserve. I plan on changing that. 
Thank you. Mr. Dorsey? To know what's going on in the jail, you have to have been there. If you look at it from the inside out, you'll have a different story. A lot of people talk about it. But I worked in the jail for eight years. In 2012, I ran for Bear County Sheriff. I ran against Susan Pamela Lopez and a couple of other candidates. Where after getting knocked out of the race in the primary, I went over to Ms. H Ms. Pamela and I told her that there are some things going on in the jail that needs to be taken care of. Four years later, that jail is worse off than it ever been. I mean, the officers on the street taking lives, there is such a mental crisis in the jail, the use of chemical restraint, and it just keeps going and going and going. We have to make the right decision, Bear County. We have to. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Pomerleau? Let me talk about the uh, couple of the things my opponents have talked about. One in every five inmates in the Bear County Jail has some level of mental illness. That's not just in the jail, that's also a reflection of our community. And we have worked from the beginning to establish multiple levels of mental health assessments. And the one that we just started last year has already shown that we've identified 20% of everyone who is arrested in this county and are diverting them to treatment rather than to jail. But through the work that we've done of correcting things that uh, were still undone at the beginning when I became sheriff, we've reduced the number of suicides in the jail by 27% over the four years prior to that, and we continue to work in that regard to assure that inmates are safe, our officers are safe, and we are providing safety Thank for our uh, community. Thank you. Um, the next question, we're going to start with Mr. Ricketts. While San Antonio is far from being the most dangerous large city, crime is increasingly a problem, particularly property crime. What role do you see the sheriff taking in mitigating this problem? Back when I was with the department, we had an operation called the SOU, Special Operations Unit. These deputies were highly trained in stopping burglaries and car thefts. They knew it was going on, and they stopped them after one example. That unit was disbanded by a previous sheriff. Uh, this is one of the biggest problems we have facing the deputies right now. The county is so large, and there's such a large area for them to have to drive around in, it's hard for them to keep an eye on people's houses. And this is what I've suggested. Uh, if you're in a certain district, look at the houses. See what cars do not belong at that location. Get out of your car and go up and talk to them and ask them what they're doing there. Men and women want to come home of an evening with their possessions still being there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dorsey. San Antonio is our home. Bear County is our home. I tell you, there is a saying that I used to say when I retired from the military. SA would be like LA. Everybody know how LA crime is. What we need to do in Bear County is ch challenge our commissioners, challenge our leaders, challenge those that handle the funds of Bear County Sheriff and get more officers on the street. I even would petition the governor that most of these officers in the state, a lot of people don't know, they all are peace officers first. And then they are sheriff and deputies and, and police officers and so forth and so on. If it was up to me, I would take all the patches off of every, every officer in this state and I would allow these officers that are sitting next to your house to respond as opposed to having an officer come straight across, all across town to get to your house. The response time is too long and you'll never, ever, ever get anything done with response time over 20 minutes. Thank you. Ms. Pomerleau? When I became the sheriff, this agency was 30 years behind in technology, in facilities, and workforce development. And as I said, not only are we having the groundbreaking for the first ever substation one week from today, the second groundbreaking for the other substation will be on October the 21st. We've added more than 40 additional law enforcement officers over the, since I've been the sheriff, 
in working with the county commissioners. In terms of property crime, we established the Sheriff's Habitual Offenders Team, and they have been able to solve 18% more property crimes since that unit's been established. And we will continue working with the Commissioner's Court to make sure we have the resources to keep our community safe, including we've, moved, we've quintupled the number of cellular on patrol in neighborhoods that have uh, neighborhood uh, watches and making sure that they are our eyes and ears and partnering with us. Thank you. Mr. Salazar. While solving crime is, is always a good thing, preventing crime is the better, the better bet. In my 23 years of law enforcement, community policing and crime prevention have been my specialty. And the best way to prevent crime is through a two-fold approach. Of course, you have enforcement activities that need to be conducted. You need to be out proactively patrolling your neighborhoods. But the second aspect of it is the public education aspect. We need to be empowering our public on how best to take an active role in their own protection until we get there. And so that, that means educating the public on, on the best ways to, to prevent crime from happening. Many times it's as simple as just reminding folks to close your garage door because that's an open portal to your house and all of your valuables. It's a matter of taking, taking advantage of uh, resources that are available, like what the San Antonio Police Department has, where we'll come out and do a, a home assessment of your home, and we'll teach you how to harden the target that is your home. So I'm, I'm a much bigger fan of preventing crime from happening in the first place. That's the key to, uh, to uh, preventing crime. Thank you. Mr. Ricketts? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll do it again. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'll do it again. <laughs> I got behind myself. <laughs> okay, this will be our final question. What are the most significant challenges in running a jail? And we'll start with Mr. Dorsey. One minute, please. Is that the one I just asked? Mm -hmm. Boy, I... <clears throat> okay. You asked that one, yeah. Okay, then we'll ask this one. Um, okay. Currently, the sheriff's office is a two-tier system. Are there any plans to make it a one-tier system where all deputies will be peace officers? And we'll start with Mr. Dorsey. Great question. Great question. My military background takes me back to when we had security and law enforcement. There was always a fight. There was always some commotion amongst both of the ranks. In 1986, we decided to deplete the security part and to combine those forces. Yes, there is a great need in this county to tear down the wall between the law enforcement officers and the detention officers. All officers within the state, once they get that peace officer license, and if I was in charge of that jail, before they even came into the sheriff's department, I would ensure that their training was involved peace officers instead of detention. We have a great need for more officers in this county. The commissioner just released 17 positions on the constable. And I'm not trying to throw the ball at all, everybody, but we need to do something different. We gotta get more officers on the ground. We gotta do better in Bear County. San Antonio is our home. As Mr. Salazar said, preventive is the best way of fixing any type of crime, and we need to get those officers on the street. Thank you. Ms. Pomerlo? When I became the sheriff, it was obvious that people, deputies who served in the jail were treated as second-class citizens. If you weren't in law enforcement, you just ain't. And since that time, we have raised the level of professionalism for our detention officers, and more than 100 today are, have national certifications as certified corrections professionals. And that recognizes the role that they play in public safety. They are two different types of professions, but they also share a number of skills and responsibilities, and both are important in our community to keep it safe. It's a matter of making both parts of the profession recognized for the job that they do, and both are just as important in keeping our community safe. Thank you. Mr. Salazar? 
to answer your question, I don't believe that uh, a one-tier system where everybody's a peace officer is, is the, the solution to what we have going on. Uh, while everybody needs a, a better trained uh, police officer, of course, uh, police training saves lives, uh, that's not necessarily the key here. That peace officer training is something that's very expensive. We're a government agency, and it, it's not a bottomless pit of money. So the, the key is to make sure that everybody's trained on a continual basis within their own career path. There are people that are perfectly happy being detention officers for 20, 30 years, and, and they don't ever want to be police, peace officers. So to force them into that role is just not something that's there. What we need to be doing at the sheriff's office is making sure that we're holding on to our current personnel. We have an agency that's lost over 200 people through attrition over the past two years. They're leaving to go elsewhere. And so we need to, to definitely improve the, uh, the morale and the environment that those officers are in so that they'll continue to stick around and protect and serve as, as we need to within the current system that we have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ricketts. We've been fighting this issue for 20 years. What I propose is to put on two classes every day so that the deputies working in the jail that want to become peace officers will have the opportunity to go to these classes to become certified peace officers. Once you do that, you've got more highly trained officers working in the jail. They can see a light at the end of the tunnel where they're not going to be sitting there as detention officers the rest of their lives. So when they become peace officers, then we can start taking them out and let them ride along with warrants or patrol. So when it comes time for them to advance further, they'll already have the experience. This is at no cost to the taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're now going to have the one-minute closing statement. We'll start with Mr. Dorsey. Um, and I would like to ask all of the candidates if they would mind if the student leaders came up and stood behind you and the college got a picture of the four of you with the student leaders. Thank you. Okay, so um, Michelle, go ahead. And Mr. Dorsey, your one-minute closing statement, please. In closing, I think it's very important that I make everybody understand that I have 31 years of law enforcement. I have served at every level. I know Bear County. Bear County is my home. I know those officers in, that county, in the county. Those officers deserve better. Their family deserve better. We have to do something, Bear County. Elect me as your next sheriff, and I promise you again that my word is all I got and that I will be the strongest sheriff Bear County have ever had. I speak from experience. I speak from my military background. And like I say, all the families here, I thank you guys for your time tonight. Thank you. And God bless each and every last one of you. Thank you. Mr. Ricketts? As I said, in my 27 years of law enforcement, it's all been at the county level. I live outside of a municipality, so we don't have the safety that people that live in the cities do. We have to wait half an hour to an hour for a deputy to show up. I'm a constable, so I don't have to worry about that myself. But the rest of the citizens of Bear County do. I wish that you would all take time and look at the problems that we have and who have the solutions to them. Go to my website and you'll see that there's more problems that's been, than what's been mentioned. And I have the solutions to these problems. Please, vote the Bible. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Salazar. When you call 911, you don't ask for a Democrat or a Republican to come to your house. What you want is the most qualified, best educated, best trained, and most willing officer to come to your house and help you out in your time of need. On January 1st, 2017, I'm going to get up out of, out of bed and I'm going to get dressed for work. I'm going to put on a badge like I've done for the past 23 years, and I'm going to protect and serve. You, the voters of Bear County, are going to tell me what badge I'm going to put on that day. On election day, you're going to be asked to make many decisions across all levels of government. As far as the sheriff's office, you're going to be asked to decide who's most likely to fight crime in a, in a meaningful way, who's most likely to form long-lasting relationships with the community, and who's going to be the most likely to be a good steward of taxpayer dollars. I can tell you that that person is me. My name's Javier Salazar. I want to be your next sheriff, and I'm respectfully asking for your vote. Thank you. Ms. Pomerlo? This race is about electing the best qualified to serve and protect the people of Bear County. And in a 21st century sheriff's office, it's important, and this is one of the fastest growing metropolitan areas in the nation, it's important that one have a different set of skills 
than just law enforcement or jail operations. It takes executive leadership to lead an organization of almost 2,000 people and oversee a budget of close to $200 million. And the race isn't just about fixing past problems. It's about looking to the future and making the kind of changes that are necessary to move us into the future. I've been asked to represent Bear County in the state of Texas by Democrats, by Republicans, in the state legislature, in the Congress, and in the White House on issues of criminal justice in our community, mental health, and across the board. Thank and you. And I will continue doing that as I continue to be your sheriff for the next four years. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, will the student leaders come up now and have their picture taken with the sheriff's candidates? Well, that picture is being taken. I will remind you that uh, early voting begins on October 24th and ends on November 4th. Election day is November 8th. Thank you for coming out tonight to learn about the candidates. That concludes tonight's candidate forum. Please join me in thanking the candidates for their participation and thank you for attending. I won't bite. <laughs>